Yeah. Now, I'm from the South. Anybody know anybody from the South? I'm going to prove my South or my Southerness. Born in the country. My granddaddy's name was Jim Willie. My grandma's name was Ida May. Now, how come country folks, most of them got two first names? <laughs> Crack me up. Grew up in a small town in Kentucky. Uh, my grandfather was a hog farmer. Never in my wildest dreams when I was sitting there slopping. Anybody slop hogs before? <laughs> Who slopped hogs? Be honest. A couple of y'all like, <laughs> right? That's a unique experience, isn't it? I mean, you know, you want to talk about humbling. That's humbling to go ahead and slop hogs. And I'll tell you what, I did that for many years. Never in my wildest dreams that I think from slopping hogs that I'd be able to do what I've done. But I'm glad that my grandfather told me something key that I'm going to share with you tonight. He said, listen, boy, you can do anything you want to do. How many think those are great words to say to your kids? Yeah. You can do anything you want. Everybody say it. You can do anything you want to do. And that's what I love most about this man, Byron Belk, our president and founder of Rain. He has that in his heart, that you can do anything you want to do. I wonder what the world would be like if we could really take an interest in people and when we meet them, go, you know what? You can do anything you want to do. Why haven't you done more? Most people haven't done more because most people don't have somebody that's really believed in them. So what Rain International is about more than anything is about that man's belief, Casey Whitaker's belief, our, our, our owners, our investors, their belief, the people who are current distributors, partners in Rain International in this room. Raise your hand, right? Give yourself a hand because that's that belief. See, when you get started, it's that belief. So, you know, I'm honored to be here tonight, and I'm going to tell you, you know, we can do things different. We can do things slow. We can do things fast. I asked Byron, how you want to do them? He said, let's do it fast. So this is my first Rain International training, by the way. Thank you for being with me. So I'm going to pretend like you came over my house, and we sat down in the living room, and you said, man, Jay, tell me really what it takes in order to blow up a network marketing business. How could you take people that were selling furniture on the street corners and have them make more in a month than some people make in an entire lifetime? How is it possible that you created multiple six-figure monthly earners? Just like that. How'd you do that? Well, it started back with Jim Willie Nolan. He told me, boy, you can what? Do anything you want to do. So tonight, more than anything, is about what you believe that you can do. And I'm telling you right now that you can what? You can do anything you want to do, right? Now, this is a big one. Whenever I do trainings, I usually have people participate like this. I have them speak to themselves because the person you really got to convince tonight more than anybody is you. Now, watch this. Watch when you talk to yourself this way. And this is not going to be proper English. This is going to be countryfied. You ready? You ready? Yes. Right? Say Ain't nothing wrong with me. Say it. Ain't nothing wrong with me. See, when you start talking to yourself like that, you're just walking down to your bathroom sometimes. You go, ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> right? How many of you got a mirror in your bathroom? Right? But sometimes when you walk past the mirror, just look at it and go, ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> and just watch what happens. You start talking like that. And you look at, you look at yourself again. You go, I can do anything. Yeah, you. 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 You got to get this you thing straight inside of you. And as soon as you do, greatness is coming your way. I promise you that. I promise you. Because as I started testing this thing out, and I started studying the success books in the world, who's ever heard of Think and Grow Rich? Who's ever read the book? Right? Whoever noticed that that book is not part of our curriculum in school? You ever notice that? And I used to wonder, man, this is the most successful book for creating millionaires ever. Why is that book not in school? Now, let me ask you a question. Why do we go to school? To learn to be? Employees. He said employees. <laughs> <laughs> He's being truthful. But it's supposed to be to what? To be successful. Right? We're supposed to be learning things about how to go out and carry out our life. The, the book that's responsible for creating more millionaires in all time is not in our school. So you got this book, 
And I finally figured it out. If you get into the first few pages, it talks about who Dr. Napoleon Hill, who he studied. You start flipping the pages, and then you start seeing Thomas Edison, Alexander Graham Bell, Rockefeller, Roosevelt, right? The Wright brothers. You start seeing big names, right? And then here's what's so amazing about most of these names. There's a big list of them. When Napoleon Hill studied these people for over 20 years to figure out how they became multimillionaires and several of them billionaires, how did they do it? He intently studied them for over 20 years. How many of you would agree that Napoleon Hill was serious about his study? Who would agree with that, right? He was serious. Now, he also studied broke people for like 20 years. He studied them intently, intensely as well. Looking at them, what do they do? What is the difference? Human being, blood, sweat, tears, hands, mouth, nose. Y'all got all those things? Uh-huh. <laughs> I come like four of y'all said, yeah. What's the rest of y'all got? <laughs> Some of y'all are like, I got blood, yeah. <laughs> Some people in the back, do I got blood? Yeah, you got blood. <laughs> got a nose, right? Ears, human beings. Try to figure out what's going on between both of these human beings. Try to figure it out. And after 20 years, he broke it down in a book called Laws of Success. It's about that thick. I got one. And the condensed version of that book is called Think and Grow Rich. It's really like the condensed, watered-down version. If you really want to get in there, get Laws of Success. But even with that condensed version, it's created more millionaires than any other book ever. And when you look at those first pages and you start seeing those people that were in that book, Rockefeller, Edison, you start going through all these people. Henry Ford, how many of you heard of Henry Ford? How many of you appreciate Henry Ford? Why? How'd you get here? How many of you appreciate Dr. Alexander Graham Bell? Why? How many of you got a cell phone? That's what happened from that, right? How many of you appreciate Thomas Edison? The lights are on, right? Most of these great minds, men and women, some of the greatest of all time, almost every one of those people didn't have passed a sixth grade education. And they became billionaires and great inventors. Now, can you imagine if you were in school and you were flipping through the book and you started studying and you started looking at, oh, Edison, third grade education, hmm, billionaire, hmm, Ford. Sixth grade education, mm, billionaire. And you're just flipping down through it and you start seeing the common denominator. How many of you would probably take your books and go, well, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to put that book in that school. Because people say education is the key to success. It's not true. It's specific knowledge that's the key to success. I proved it. From the slop buckets to creating billions now of dollars in sales volume. So this little thing. For you rain partners now. And if you're brand new, just put your seat belts on and see if you can hold on. <laughs> they did that to me. They said, that's you. Right, that little circle there. They said, you can go out and start building a team of other people. They said that you can go sell product and make money when you sell it. And then they said, if you go build a team, whenever they sell it, you're going to make some money as well. And it's all based upon how you think. And if I can get you to start thinking right, I promise you, you're going to start growing rich. How many of you ready just to grow rich? Some of y'all feel a little guilty about that. <laughs> I don't know if I want to grow rich. Because money ain't what? Everything. How many of you heard that before? Who heard that lie before? <laughs> right? Money ain't everything unless you don't have some. Now, if you don't have some money, what's money become? Everything. everything. So you think I'm playing with that. People say, money ain't everything. I'm like, okay, go down and try to pay your doctor's bill with a bushel of potatoes. What do you say, Doc? Doc goes up and gives you services. Somebody walks up and says, Doc, I brought some potatoes in for you, Doc. I want to pay for my services today. What would you say, Doc? You can't, you can't do it, right? What? You want some what? Money. That's how we operate today. So money, believe it or not, whether we want to feel how we feel about it, is huge. It's really 
affecting a lot of people in a negative way. It's how you look at money that determines what money becomes to you. Now watch this. We got some good people in this room. Now how many of you think that you're relatively a good person? How many? Right? Same people got blood, right? <laughs> think you're a good person, right? So don't you know you? Don't you know who you are? Don't you know that if you had more money, you would do better things with it? How many of you know who you are? Don't, how many of you would help out other people and less fortunate if you had some extra, right? See, if you had excess, you already got to know who you are. So I settled this thing up early in my career. November 13th, 1995 is when I got started. I'm going on 20 years in this industry. And my, my mentors, I appreciate them right now because they got this straight with me early on about money, right? Quit feeling guilty about money. Go, go figure out who you are first. And see, I learned out who I am because as soon as I got extra money, I went and started helping more people. I got an orphanage school now that I co-own with Dr. Amos Abuga over in Kenya, Africa. We feed 370 kids every month. We give them housing. We give them education. Our school in Kisi, Kenya has been number one three years in a row. Now, see, that's who I was back even when I was broke. Y'all understand that? Because when, when more money came, all right? Appreciate that. See, when more money came, it proves who you really are. And money's only going to make you more of what you really are. If you're a jerk now and we give you a bunch of money, what are you going to be then? A big jerk, right? But we ain't, do we have any jerks in the room tonight? <laughs> yeah, I'm a jerk. But we ain't going to give you no money, <laughs> right? We know how to fix you up in the comp plan. You already got to know who you are. Don't you know who you are, sir? Sure. Yeah, of course. So this thing that money, y'all quit feeling guilty about it. So we can go ahead and make some more and help more people. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Right now, I'm, I'm held back now because I need more people to help. Because Dr. Amos and I are working on building a big school facility, a campus that can now take care of 2,000 kids. But what does it require? More money, right? So what we want to do is we want to get the cooperation of other people, and we want to start attacking things that we want to change. Guess what's going to change them? Money. Guess what changes politics? Guess what? Money. You don't like what's going on in Washington? Go make a bunch of money. Let every person in this room have an extra million dollars of disposable income. And we get together and go, look, we don't like that. One million each. You think some people will listen to us? You better believe it. It'll be about a hundred million. We walk up with a hundred million going, listen, we don't like the homeless situation in this city. Y'all do something about it right when? Now. Guess somebody's going to, how many of you would agree somebody's going to listen? Yeah, they're going to listen. So we got to get money straight. Now, let's go fast. Y'all ready to go fast? We're going to see. Let's get this word right. How many of you ever heard that word? Energy. Successful people have a high level of energy. Successful people, they got it going on, even when they're broke. See, I was a multimillionaire even when I was living in my mother's basement. When I was broke with my $149 suit, right? I had it going on right then because I had my energy right. I was taught on how to control my energy. If you're going to turn anything around, you have to turn your energy around first. Because guess what? Guess where money comes from? This is a big one. Where does money grow, by the way? How many of you ever heard money don't grow on trees? How many of you heard that? Well, whoever told you where it grows? <laughs> money don't grow on trees. My grandma, Adame. How many of y'all got a grandma like this? Or you've done this. I've been in the store, and I'm going, Grandma, I want this. Grandma, I want that. Grandma, I want this. The fact she turned around and go, listen, boy. Money don't grow on trees. Now, how, my grandmother from the South, she believed in whooping you. She get a belt out of a good switch. Some of y'all don't know anything about that, right? Now, how many of you think if I would have went to my grandma? Well, where does it grow at then, grandma? <laughs> how many of y'all think I would have got a timeout? <laughs> how many of you would agree I would have probably got knocked out? <laughs> so I, I didn't never, I never asked her. So I've been out of this complex for years. 
about where money grows. <laughs> For years, I'm trying to figure it out. Well, it don't grow on trees. I can't ask grandma. Where does money grow? Where does it grow? Met a man that made $600 million in 10 years. Went from homeless to $600 million in 10 years. That's who mentored me. He said, where's money grow? I said, I don't know. Grandma wouldn't tell me. <laughs> right? He said, money grows in other people's pockets. And you got to learn to exchange a product or service for that money. Or you could just knock them over the head and take it. <laughs> if you knock them over the head and take it, they're going to do what? Take you to jail. So it's best to exchange what? Products and services for money. So now money comes from other who? People. What those people look like? Some of them white. Some of them black. Some of them Latino. Some of them Asian. Right? How many would agree that all those different people have some money? Right? That's why we're not rain Utah. We're rain what? International. Because we want to participate in helping other people give us their money. <laughs> Do I look like I feel guilty about that? No. I want more money. For more people internationally, why? Because I know what we will do with that money. See, if you give us some money here with rain, we'll give you something of greater value. So you can get a product at wholesale and go sell it what? Retail, that's called profit. That's called being a capitalist. And we gotta put the capital back in this system. We gotta create capitalists. So we gotta get energy right. Now some of y'all that's gonna be tough because who you've been hanging around. More than any other factor, that's going to determine who you are. How many of you tell your kids, don't hang around those kids that do drugs? How many of you ever told your kids that, right? Why? He's like, man, my mama just told me that the other day. <laughs> right? I saw you like, man, mama told us that. Right? How many of you heard people say that, right? Why don't you want your kids hanging around other kids that do drugs? Why? They're going to, no matter how strong you raise them, if they hang around bad influences, what's going to happen to them? They're going to start doing it. You'll take your well-reigned child, and if you don't raise child, I said reign child, that's good, I'm going to tell my head. <laughs> your well-raised child, that's a reign child, that will have your great influences from your house, and if you don't control their environment, you're going to have a situation on your hand. So let's get your energy straight. So here it goes. The population breaks down into four categories, 27%. There's 27% of the population that are extremely negative. Now, these are not exact, but they're pretty daggone close. I've been studying this just like Napoleon Hill for about 20 years, and I finally figured this out. You know what it took me? I figured it out probably about 15 years ago, but it took me five years to really get it that there's around 27 out of every 100 people, they are miserable. Their whole goal is to suck you right into their miserable world. You can be all excited, you'd be like, yeah, and they'd be like, <laughs> How many know people like that, right? You'd be like, oh, that's great, it's great. Now, like you left, you went home, some of you went home. Like, boy, rain, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it, right? And some of your friends went, oh, really? That ain't going to work. How many has the people do that, right? That ain't going to work. Them things don't work. 27 percenter, man. You can't mess with 27 percenters. If you're going to be successful, you got to get your energy right about how you're going to deal with 27 percenters. And people that are successful, they don't hang around 27 percenters. So some of you have to make some decisions because some of these people are even in your house. <laughs> so, boy, you see some of these married couples looking straight ahead. Some of y'all with the wrong mate. I tell people that all the time. You done made a mistake. You done got hooked up with a 27 percenter. <laughs> man, people are going to be calling us, man. We got all these divorces happening in the rain. Like, you are 27 percenter. I'm gone. 
I've had people do it. I've had people go home and say, look, now you are 27%. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. And the husband's like, what? And the wife's like, what? Okay, 27%. Can't mess with these people. If you're going to build a business, do you realize that you got to get other people? Where's money come from? So really it's who you attract, right? Can you attract? Whoever attracts the most people is going to make the most what? Money. Whoever can teach other people to attract the most people is going to make even more money. That's how powerful this is. But if you put a 27% in your business, you are going to kill your business. Bam! Go ahead and recruit one. Let them come and hang around your team. Say you got 10 excited distributors. Bring a 27% around. What y'all so excited about? And the excited people was all like, oh. don't they do it? You ever seen it happen? How many of you ever been dancing sometimes? You're like, man, I'm just dancing, having a good time. Somebody walking, oh, what you dancing about? Oh, no, no, just, you know. They mess with you. Can't mess with these people. Sixty percent of the population, which represents the what? Majority. Sixty percent of the people are motivatable. I don't know if that's a word, but I. <laughs> so these people here are negative. Un. Motivated. And these people here are what? Motivatable. Check these people out. These are the roller coaster people. Right? Whatever they hear last is what they do. If they heard a good like tonight, some of y'all gonna be like, this was the awesomest training ever. I'm telling you what. Woo! <laughs> this is the bomb, mama. <laughs> Mom, I'm telling you, mama, we're getting rich. Right? And then uncles open up the room and go, ah, that don't work. You go, well, maybe it don't work. <laughs> I mean, you know people like that. <laughs> right? Right? They get on a conference call. You finally get them on a conference call. A president comes on, gives a smoking message. And they hear it, they're like, yeah, you know what? I ain't messing with uncle no more. Yes, yes. Byron Belka, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Well, we reign in a national. <laughs> Right? Friend says, are oh, you still doing that thing? That rain thing? <laughs> oh no, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> How many of you know people like this? Be honest. How many of you are like this? Because <laughs> hey, 60% of you in this room, if you were brand new, if you're in rain, you probably got a little advantage. But if you were brand new in this room, 60% of you would be like this, up and down. Ridiculous. These people drive you crazy. <laughs> How do I know? I used to be one. <laughs> I used to be, when I first walked in, man, I was all over the place. I've been playing professional baseball for six and a half years. Four years with the Padres, one with the Rockies, one with the Mariners. Never got a chance to go big time. Signed my major league contract. Finally, after going in my sixth year, finally, my roommate, Alex Rodriguez, about to play with Ken Griffey Jr., going to spring training. A strike takes place. How many of you remember 1994 baseball strike? You remember? Mm, it got me. <sighs> so I couldn't, I didn't get to get my dream. And right all of a sudden, the strike breaks, and I blow my elbow out. How many of you ever been frustrated? You can't even get it out good. You ever been like that? You ever been like that? I can't tell you. Like you can't get words out. I can't tell you. Not one more thing. If one more thing happens. Right? How many ever felt that way? If it's just one more thing. You know what I'm talking about? She said today, right? One more thing. Well, guess what? 60% are like that. If you're going to build a powerhouse business, you got to snap out of it. Everybody say snap out of it. You got to snap out of it. You got to at least be a 10 percenter. 10 percent of the population are self, what? Self-motivated. They see something, it makes sense, let's go. It's time to rock. It's time to rock. It's time to what? Rock. It's time to rock. 10 percent of the population. So if this were all brand new people, 
right? Let's say we had 100 people in the room. There would be 10 that are here. Now, when you're out recruiting, guess who you're looking for? That's who I'm looking for. When I'm going to build my team, I'm looking for here. I know through a good presentation that these people are going to jump in. Woo! <laughs> right? Now, my goal is to have good enough training, be strong enough as a leader to snap some of these people from here to what? Over here. And how I do that is I give people two chances. Three strikes, you're out. So what typically happens, you get in the business where we're going to go build this thing, right? I need you to make sure, and I always explain this to people. Who wants to build a multi-million dollar rain international business? Raise your hand. You better than what? Explain this to your new prospect coming in. This will raise the level of your business dramatically. This will increase your retention dramatically. If you just get people to understand, pick one. Where are you at? And then say, be honest. And most people will tell you, well, yeah, I'm right here. And then you got to say, look, you can't stay here. And we're going to go build this thing, and you're going to have people tell you all kind of stuff. You see, 97% of the population are ran. 97%. But other people's opinions. They even affect a self-motivated person. But they figure out how to just bust through it. 97% are focused on other people's opinions. And other people. And see, you can't do it. So I'll tell a person, if I was working with you, right? I said, look. I got, I'm looking for you to be my project. What's your name? Bert. Bert. I got Bert right here with the E or you. Yes, right. I got Bert. Me and Bert going to work. Here's Jay. I got Bert. Bert, you're going to be my project. What we're going to do, Bert, is going to build an explosive team down here. I'm going to help you build. But Bert, Bert, I got to make sure that you are low maintenance and you get to be high performing. Fair enough? Fair enough. Right. Now, you might not know the business, but you got to, but here's what it is. You got to at least be low maintenance. Here's what that means. You can't go up and down on me, Bert. I'll stick right here with you. We're going to go through this no matter what, but I can't deal with you if you're going to be low maintenance. So you told me about your dreams. I want to figure out his dreams. Wait till we really get down in some serious training. How many of you would like to have one day, me and Byron would just get down and give you about six hours of just, just get down in it, training? How many of you like to have something like that, right? One of these days, I'll go on down in there. But right now, I would have already got his dreams. I would attach us building to his dreams, and I tell him, you got to be what? Low what? Low maintenance. I mean, you can't go up and down. I need you to have a great attitude. You need to have great energy. No matter what, Bert, can you at least give me that? Yes. Because if we're going to build a multi-million dollar business, there is a price to pay. You understand that, Bert? So the price to pay, the minimum deposit, is a great attitude. Right? So what you got to start doing from this day forward, Bert, you got to start making deposits. So the more deposits that you make, there's going to come a time you can start making what? Withdrawal. Withdrawal, see? And the deposit that you make, it all is going to be based upon your attitude and your energy. Almost all of it. Totally agree. Right? If you want to pull a million dollars out, what do you think you have to deposit in energy. from an energy? Uh, yeah? You got to have million dollar energy. I got a CD series I'm putting out. It'll be out in about two or three weeks called Million Dollar Energy. Just so people understand how to do it. Right? Just to boom, get this. Lock people in. So, Bert, we're going to go to build here. Now, Bert, all of a sudden, he takes off. Somebody goes out there. He runs into one of these people, start, start nagging him out. Bert comes back and goes, Jay, man, Jay. Jay, I'm telling you, man. People getting on me, man. Try to do it, man. I, had, I, had, I invited 10 people. Only one showed up. And, man, I tell you, whew. How many had people say that before, right? I invited 10. How many of you invited more people that, that showed up? How many invited more people that didn't show up tonight that did show up? How many? See? They're just not going to show up. Some of them are not going to show up. But if he does that to me, I'm going to go, Bert, that's part of the process. But Bert, I got a two-strike rule. Third strike, you out. Right? So I don't know if you can make it because Bert would have already told me he's a 60 percenter. Right? Now, I'm just role playing with you. Bert might not be like, I'm not on 60 percent. I'm at least 10, Jay. Right? But see, Bert... He would, have, he would have probably told me what yeah, he admitted to this, and then I would have said, here, Bert, two strikes, you out. So the first strike, I give you a warning, right? And if you go down again, I warn you again. If you go down again, I go, Bert, you just, you're just probably not going to get this. You need to be more of a very, very part-time builder. Just take your time. 
And you know what, I gotta move on to some other projects. I'll be here to support you, you know, when I got time, but you can go ahead and just handle it. You, you know, right now, it's just, this, this ain't gonna seem to work for you, Bert, okay? All right, catch you later. <laughs> now I'm gone. Where am I at? I'm in the wind. Y'all feel that breeze go by your head? That was me in the wind. <laughs> now, the only chance I got to save him, Bert, is if I go. If I go and he sees me keep building, guess what he might do? Run after me. The only way you can save a 60 percenter after the second strike is if they run after you. Some of y'all, this is going to go way over your head. How many of you, going, how many of you are willing to say, I get it? Say it. Yes. So remember, that's why we put it on film tonight, so we can replay this. Okay, now watch. What does that leave us, Bert? We got 60 plus 27 is what? I thought y'all went to school. <laughs> we get 14,000 hours in school, grades 1 through 12. Did y'all know that? It's 14,000 hours. What's the square root of pi? <laughs> How many of you ever use it to pay your groceries? Okay, what's 60 plus 27? Plus 10. What does that leave us? 3% of the population. Can anybody guess what they are? Michael Jackson. Motivators. Boy, they can motivate other people. And here's what they're best at doing. Motivating 60 percenters to become 10 percenters. Motivating 10 percenters to become what? Three percenters. Three percenters are not born. They're built. There's not one three percenter that's born. They're built. Now, I, just, I got a little baby. His name is Kai. And he's five months old. And let me tell you something. I'm pumping it in his system right now. I'm all in his ear. Sometimes he's like, ah, yeah. and I'm like, you can do it. You can win. You the bomb. You awesome, son. And then he pops his head back. He goes, I'm telling you, with them gums, you know. He getting it. I'm telling you, every time I talk it into him, he's like, do it to your kids so you can do anything. I tell him all the time, you're not afraid of nothing. You're a conqueror. You're a warrior. You're awesome. And it's just getting in the spirit. Why? Because I know I got to give him the best shot because I know he's not born. He got an advantage having me as his daddy, right? How many of you would agree he has an advantage, right? <laughs> right? How, where do y'all think that our president is on this particular chart? Is there any doubt? No. How many of you ever seen him have a bad day? No. I walked up, my mentor who made... $600 million in 10 years. He walked up on the stage. There was 4,000 people in the room. He said, listen here. And he used some explicitives. Started the training out with some explicitives. I said, is this, a, is this a joke? Is this for real? I mean, he was going. He goes, I want to tell every one of you. If you can't get this down, I want you to get out of here. I just paid $995. <laughs> And this man is telling me to get out of here. He said, if you can't get this straight, you are wasting your time. He says, successful people are having a great day every day, no matter what. He said, how many of you got problems? How many of y'all got problems? He said, leave me in your car. That's what your windows are for. <laughs> you get out of your car, you just... Right? You roll your windows up before you get out of your car. You look at them. You say, y'all stay in there. Shut the door. <laughs> and you go on. Just let them be in the car. Problems can't go through windows. Y'all didn't know that? <laughs> right? Just leave them in there. Everybody's got problems. It's how you deal with it. Losers, unsuccessful people wear their whole lives on their sleeve. Here. You got to learn right now to start having a great day every day. No matter what. See, who's that up to? It's up to you. That's a you thing. That's why you got to start saying to yourself, ain't nothing wrong with me. Say it. Say it. See, that's country, ain't it? Ain't nothing wrong with me. English teachers in here like, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with me. You got to work to go, look, let's get here. 
Who makes the biggest money? Motivators. If you're gonna if you're gonna build a massive team, you gonna have to be a three percenter. Right now, your deposit on a three percenter is you at least got to be a what? Ten percenter. We gotta get that straight tonight. The 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 worst case scenario that comes out of this training tonight is clarity. So, right, does this make sense to you? Are you understanding this? Right? You gotta make a decision. What's your name? Dan. Dan, where you at on that chart, Dan? I'm trying to become a motivator. See, you're working on it. Are you at least self motivated? Oh yes. Oh yes. Where you at on this chart? You're moving towards Twitter, but right now you're where? Oh, yeah. She's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> right? Where you at on that chart? Me? Yeah. Uh, 27. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can y'all get him out of here, please? <laughs> Couple guys come up, come on. Oh, we used to kick them out all the time in presentations. Back in the old school days, I used to do presentations. You used to see those people in the audience go, psst, psst. And I knew right away I'm dealing with a what? 27 percenter. I always had a couple guys in the back. I go, you got a problem? And they'd be like, what, who, me? I'm like, yeah, you said I go, you got, you got, you got holes in your face? You go, psst, psst. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, hey, come and get him. He's like, what? My guys come up and go. They, <laughs> they walk him right out. They guess what everybody else in the audience would do? <laughs> People used to think we staged it. They thought it was because everybody would sign up. And I would go, once he go out, I said, listen, we don't, play with your, we don't play with your future here. We protect your future. If we catch somebody that's negative, we just get them out. We want to protect you. People were like, yeah. <laughs> Did this help you so far tonight? You ever heard this before? Right? So I want y'all to get this straight. Rain International, we are building what? Motivators. So what we're building. On our way to building motivators, we got to get this straight with these folks because most of our company is this. And we got to take it out. See, how I know that most of our Utah crew is stuck here? Because if you weren't, we would have this room downstairs. It'd be people out the door, in the elevator, trying to get up. Can I, look, can I get in there? That's what self-motivated people do. Motivators, pack it out constantly. We got, do we got a lot of people here? Yes. But see, once you get it straight, we start getting stadiums packed out. That's where we're going, right, Byron? We can build, how many of you want to build stadiums with us? Right? Just, just, ima just imagine if you're sitting on top of that team. <laughs> Byron walks up on the stage. And you sitting down there, you got all them people in your team. He calls you on the stage. Come on up. And you remember when we started here, right? How you going to walk up there? How many you going to stroll? How many think you walk different than you walk now? You can always tell people who ain't making a lot of money, they kind of walk. People, walk, people got it going on, they walk different. We start getting you making more in a week than most people make in a year. How many of you walk different? <laughs> yeah. You got to be a what? You got to be a motivator. I'm going to race this now. Camera got it. I always got people saying, let me take a picture. <laughs> Who's got this right? See, when I first walked, can y'all tell a difference from the time I first walked up here until now? Can you tell a difference in the room? How many of you can tell that this has went up? How many of you can tell? Why? Because I'm a what? That's right. Motivators walk in, and they create their environment. Losers are affected by their environment. You got to start walking in. In Utah, when you're doing your presentations, carry yourself. You got now, some of you are not, that, not, that, not too confident. How many of you have ever had a problem sometime in your life with confidence? Right? Let me tell you something. Fake it. Some people say, well, that would be lying. <laughs> no, I want you to go to Hollywood in your brain. What do they do in Hollywood a lot? Act. How many of you think acting is lying? No, acting is what? Acting. So I teach most people in their business, just start acting confident. So what if I paid you $1 million 
to be the most confident person anybody you know knows. And I said, you got 30 days to play this role. Byron and I are putting together a movie. We got together with Casey. We said, we're going to do this incredible movie. It's called Peak Confidence. <laughs> right? And we're hiring you as the actor or actress. And your role is $1 million. And you can't, if you, but you can't break your role for 30 days. We're going to pay you a On the 31st day, you will see a wire hit your bank account. Bam! $1 million. How many of you would just scream? How many? Huh? What would you do? Honestly, y'all come on. We're at my house now. Quit acting like you all. Come on, we're at the house. If you had a million dollars hit your bank account 31 days from now, what would you do? Woo! How many of you would go stand on top of your house and go, Rain International! How many of you would do it? If you had a million hit your bank, right? That's what I want you to go in your mind right now. But you got to be the most confident person anybody you know knows. Now, Byron, Casey, and I, we're going to go out and hire some other actors. We're going to hire some 27 percenters. And we're going to have them come and try to get you to not be confident. <laughs> so you're going to have a, is that going to be a challenging role? Yeah. And some of them are going to be in your family. So 30 days, you just got to act confident no matter what. So somebody asked you a question about, well, what's in that soul? And you don't know the answer, but you're getting paid a million to act confident. How would you act? What would you say if you didn't know the answer? What would you do? <laughs> I would, I don't know. I Watch, think. ask me, and just pretend like I didn't know. <laughs> say, hey, what's in that soul? Ask me. Okay, okay. What's in that soul? I don't know. But I'm going to get the answer for you here real shortly. I'll get right back to you, and that's a great question. I'm just getting started. I'm getting this all dialed in, but I'm going places. I'll get right back to you. Fair enough? Fair enough. How many of you can do that? <laughs> How many of you can say, I don't know? How many of you can say it? <laughs> now, is there a difference in going, I don't know? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> Versus, I don't know. It's a great question. Is there a difference? Yes. Yes. Said the same words, right? But 93% of all communication is body language and voice tonality. 93%. 7% are the actual words. Ladies, help me out, ladies. <laughs> watch this. Watch this, ladies. Y'all gonna help me out? Ladies, say I'll help you out. Say it. I'll help you out. Okay, watch. Right. You ever been in a relationship, lady, with a guy, and he's about to walk out the door and go, hey, baby, I love you. I love you, baby. And he turned around and go, I love you, too. <laughs> Do you believe him? Why? He goes, I love you too. Didn't he say the words, I love you? You didn't believe it? Why? See, his body, like his voice tonality told you everything about whether he meant it or not, right? Now he's walking out the door and you go, baby, I love you. He says, girl, I want you to know something. <laughs> I almost messed up. I was about to walk out that door and not tell the love of my life, the woman of my dreams, that I'm going to be thinking about you all day long. Listen, baby, I love you too. <laughs> Ladies, how many of you believe him then? How many think it's going to be some fun tonight? Fellas, you better learn. I'm doing relationship coaching at the same time. <laughs> Y'all didn't know I was a relationship expert. I am. When you're in network marketing for years and you build big teams, what are you? You got to be great at relationships. I'm always fixing marriages and stuff. <laughs> you ever do it? Absolutely. Yeah, I always. I do some of my trainings. Lisa and Sam, they've been there, Matt. I have people come up. We call it the hot seat. I'll see some couples that are tripping, right? They're having issues. I say, hey, y'all two, come on up on the stage. <laughs> Hundreds of people. They're like, what? Come on. I say, what? I make them sit down, and we work it out on stage in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> having at least, huh? Yes, sir. I've done it. I got people right now, they got more kids. They're having more kids. Y'all ain't getting that. 
They, have, they are traveling the world together, passionate about each other, because they went up on that stage. Now, I'm looking at a few of y'all here tonight. Who am I calling up here? Let's get the chairs up. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, don't do it. Robert Kiyosaki, he, did, he, he came out with a thing, and it looks like that. Anybody know what it's called? Cash flow quadrant. And in this column, he put a letter. Does anybody know what that letter is? In that column, he put a what? In that column, he put a what? In that column, he put a what? That stands for what? Employee. Where you exchange time for money. Self-employed, guess what you're still doing? Time for money. That's the left side of the quadrant. This is the right side of the quadrant. It's that big business. You get people helping you make money. And that quadrant, you get your money helping you make more money. Now, if you came up like most people in this country or in this world, most people were born which side, left or right? In the left side. So again, we go spend 14,000 hours, grades 1 through 12, teaching us all the ins and outs about how to have a successful business. True or false? False. false. How much did we learn at all about building a successful business? Zero. Zero. We got 14,000 hours. How do you do a balance sheet? How, you, how do you read a profit and loss statement? How do you balance a checking account? Right? All important things. How to uh, interact with the opposite sex. How to raise children. How many think those are important so subjects? Yeah. Well, how come they didn't teach it to us? Then they tell you go do another four years of college or more. And after all of that, did you still learn how to get on this side? No. no. Now, I'm not bashing education. I'm bashing what they're teaching in most education. I don't like it. I'm very upfront about it. One of my greatest accomplishments ever is I didn't finish college. <laughs> so if you, if, you, if you want them people like, man, don't bring your kids around me. <laughs> if you're like, well, you got to go get a college degree. Don't bring them around me. I'm going to be like Henry Ford to tell them. Now, is college good? Yes. Is it good? Y'all come on, help me out. Say depends. <laughs> what if your kid goes to college for four years and just parties? Was it good? He didn't go to college. Right? Didn't go to college. <laughs> he went to what? Party. Well, he they got a good social life, right? right? Maybe he developed his social skills. But what we want to do is teach people how to have a successful life. So my kid, if he wants to go to college, I'm going to say go. But go for the experience of whatever you want to experience. But he probably won't go. He probably won't do it. He's probably going to be helping run my businesses. You see what I'm saying? Now, what if you go out here and build a massive rain international business? Wouldn't you want your kids to participate? Byron, you want your kids to participate? Yeah. So as they get older, they're probably going to be involved some way or another, right? And they might want to go over here or go over there, but they'll probably be involved some way or another, depending on how you influence them. Now, how many people do you know that are working in that quadrant getting rich? How many people do you know in that quadrant that are plumbers or electricians getting rich? See, it's what you've got to do is understand that to, in order to become successfully financial, financially, you've got to get to the right side of the quadrant. You've got to get involved in big business. Most people don't have extra money to invest. So you've got to get involved in big business. But it intimidates people when you talk about big business because they think it's a lot, a lot of what? Money, right? Now, for Byron, this is big business. For you as distributors or partners, it's, it, you don't, it's big business, but you get to leverage what he did. Isn't that amazing? He went out and got the money together. Didn't you go pull it together? He went and did all the hard work that it would normally take. He's the one that went out and said, let's sign this lease. 
let's go get leases around the world. Don't you have offices all over the world? That's big businesses, right? Now, when you become an, uh, a partner here, we call our partners, right? When you become a RAIN partner, it's as if you spent the same money he spent. I mean, I think that's awesome. You get to say, come on down to my office. Like you invited your prospect here tonight, you said, come on down to my office. As if it was yours. Because what you're doing is you're using this powerful tool called leverage. You like that? So you get to act as if, but here's the key. You need to start acting. Again, we're back to acting. You got to act like you did it. Now, what if you had to come up with the tens of millions of dollars that it takes to, to start, operate, and run this company? Would you wake up early in the morning? Yeah? What if somebody told you it don't work, but you already put up tens of millions? What if somebody told you that? Would that stop you? See, it wouldn't affect you if you were acting like you did it. So what we want to teach our partners is start acting like big business. So when you go out here and you start developing a team, this team starts with how many? Two. Our whole compensation plan is built on the power of what? Two. Now, if you put up $10 million, how long would it take you if the whole core concept, the make it or break it point, was whether you found the right two people, how long would it take you to find them? Right. You'd be on it, right? Now, the key, when Byron talks about I've built these huge teams fast, I built like a 55,000 member sales team in six months one time. And the key is, I got some leaders together, I said, we're going to go build this. But I've got to count on you two to get your two. I can't babysit this. You can't babysit it. Are you the right one? Are you the right one? All right. Then go find what? Two more that are the right what? The right ones. So you go and act as if you got 10 million up, and then you get the right two. It's not just two. It's the right two. So you might put two in, and maybe this person quits. What do you do? What do you do? You get another one. How long is it going to take you? See, if you got $10 million up, for example, and you're going to lose $10 million, if you don't have the right two, say one drops off within 48 hours of one dropping off, would you get it done? Nobody would have to call you up and motivate you or any of that stuff. You would go from 60%er to what? Motivator, like, how fast? That fast. Because now you're acting like it. So you get the right to. And once you get the right to, they'll do the same thing. See, the right person is the right person. Bert, are you the right person? Yes, sir. Right. So you'll get me too? Yes. How long is it going to take you? Today. Right. You get it done, right? <laughs> I got one right here. <laughs> right? Are you the right one? She's like, yes, right? But how long is it going to take you to, be the, to find the right two? You hear that? I do it faster. Look at her. Give me some. Give me some. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Y'all give it to her. See, when you get that energy, when you get that energy in your team, are you the right one? Yep. Right. So all you got to do is go, I'm going to find the right two. And you watch them. Everybody that wants to build fast, within 48 hours, they're going to give you the signal. Now listen to me. Within 48 hours, they'll have their two. If it takes them 48 hours and one minute, they're probably not going to be the right one. <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing. I've been doing this for almost 20 years, I'm telling you. Within 48 hours. Y'all ever hear of First 48? The TV show called First 48? Right, you got your first 48. Or they're going to be dead. So you got to get them going. Now, what if they want to go slow? Is that okay? I'm not talking slow tonight. We're talking what? Fast. You got to remember it. Because some of y'all going, I don't know if I can go. If you don't want to go this fast, just take all the energy that I'm giving you and break it down to 10% of that energy. Right? Just break it down. So you get the right two. Watch what happens. 
Who's brand new? This is your first time ever seeing rain. Who's brand new? All right? That's you. She's like, don't pick on me. I'm not going to pick on you. I'm going to build you a team. Watch this. What's your name? Nicole. Nicole. Nicole, name two other people that are not here that if they knew they could retire early, they would jump right on it. Name me two people. Karen. Karen. Who else? Um, Laura. Laura. Do you know two people that Karen knows? Do you know any two people that she knows? Sure. Name me two people that Karen knows. Doug. Doug. Who else? Um, um, Brandy. Brandy. You know two people that Laura knows? Yeah. Do you know anybody that Doug knows? Yeah. Who? Colin. Colin. Yeah. Anybody else? Mm, no. Okay. You know anybody else that Brandy knows? Oh, yeah. Naomi. You know anybody else that Brandy knows? Uh, uh, Reagan. Reagan. You know anybody that Marty knows? Mm, no. Okay. You know anybody that Laura, Laura knows? Valerie. Valerie, yeah. You know anybody she knows? All right. Y'all see what I just did? I started working her list right now. I let her see. She's seeing that she has a team building. Now watch, Nicole. Let's just say we did this slow. I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to go from fast to slow. <laughs> and then I'm done. I got a lot more stuff I could teach you, but we ain't got enough time. So we're going to build a house. Nicole, we're going to go what? We're going to act like we're crawling on our eyelashes to the back of the room slow. Okay? We're going slow. Instead of 48 hours, one month. Is that slow compared to 48 hours? Okay, let's say it takes you one month to get these two. And then the next month, they're crawling on their eyelashes, too. <laughs> and then in month two, they get their two. That'll be what? Four. Let's see what, your, let's see what your life looks like one year from now. Today is what? August the 27th, right? Let's see what your life looks like August 27th, 2016. Do you hope to be here? Okay. You remember last year, August? Mm -hmm. How fast did that go by? So even though it seems slow, time goes by what? Fast. And let's just say everybody, Doug, they're all going slow. In the third month, they get two. They got eight. It's not that big of a deal, right? But in the fourth month, they all get their two, which is what? And then the, the fifth month, they get their two. Now you got 32. Still not a big deal. Sixth month, 64. Seventh month. 128, eighth month, 256. Look at that. You got a little team going. You got a little something going on. You're walking different, right? Ninth month, 512. Tenth month, 1,024. Eleventh month, 2,048. August 27, 2016, on that level. 4,096. And you started out with what? Two. But it's not just 4,096. It's plus 2,048. It's plus 1,024. So you've got to add all these up. And you know what that equals? 8,190. Y'all know how I know that? Because how many times y'all think I've done that? <laughs> right? So it's 8,190. And what would happen is, you would have a left team and a right team, right? And 8,190 divided by 2 is 4,095 on your left team, 4,095 on your right team. How you doing? Right? And let's just say they all do the minimum. Minimum. So what's the minimum monthly order in order to be eligible for commissions? 50. So let's just say all they do is 50 CVs. That's all they do. Right? On this team, you would have 204,750. On this team, you would have 204,750. 
Now what the computer's going to do, Mr. Byron Belker, who's about to become your best friend, watch it. What he's going to do is he's going to look at whichever team is growing slower. In this case, they're equal. So the computer's going to pick one, right? And what it's going to do is say, out of that 2,000, 204,750 will pay you 10% of it that month. So 10% of that is what? Over what? Over 20,000 that month. Now, when they run out of their soul, because how many of you got soul? <laughs> and when you're out of your soul, what do you do? You get some what? More soul. So all of a sudden, they buy it again. Right? What's the CD on that? They get one of these boxes. How many packs in here? They just go once a day. Day two. Right? The box will end up being empty on day what? 30. They're going to start feeling, how many of you feel way better taking this than you did before? Right? Now, guess what? They're probably going to feel better too. And they're like, man, I feel better. I better order me some what? More. Here comes another 20000 the next month. Now, you don't even have to be there, Nicole. You don't even have to be there. Dusty Byron. If they ordered this, the company's going to send you that money whether you like it or not. <laughs> Isn't that a good problem to have? Now, see, when they run out again, when they run out, they're going to order it again to what? The next month. And see, we do this with my other company. Y'all, we're going to end it tonight with this. We're going to say, now, when it, when it ends, you're going to get paid 20 grand this month, but they run out, you're going to get paid 20 grand what? Again, the what? Next month. And then it comes month after month. Y'all swing with me a little bit. After month, come on. <laughs> after, and then the next month. Month. After month. Come on, y'all. After month. Come on. After month, and then the next month, month. <laughs> then you start going after month, after month, after month, and then the next month. Now, hold on, hold on. Hold on, but our compensation plan don't pay every single month. That means we pay every single what? Week. So you divide that by four, that's what? 5,000 coming every single what? Week. Come on, y'all. After a week, come on, y'all. After a week, come on. After, and then the next week. Week, we get a little bit more. After a week, after a week, after a week. You like that? And, she's like, and then the next week. Now, how difficult was that for you to understand? Right? All you got to do is get, you can't deal with 27 percenters. Can't work. They will kill this. Bam! <laughs> 60 percenters, it'll be like, we, uh, no, Ma, no. <laughs> you can't swing with a 60 percenter. You need 10 percenters to go, ma, after ma, after ma, after ma. See, y'all a little different in Utah. <laughs> Tell them. I do that in Texas. You remember the first time somebody realized it? They were like, what? You remember that guy in Houston? He was in the back of the room going, week after week after week. He started feeling it. See, when y'all start feeling it, the money's going to chase you. Do you know that money likes to come to happy people? Right? Money likes to come to people that are positive and they, they really got some things that they're looking forward to. So I didn't want to take a bunch of y'all's time tonight. I just want to give you a dose of how to think. Tonight, more than anything, was about thinking so you can grow richer. Is that fair enough? So I hope I didn't offend anybody with my crazy country boysness. <laughs> Y'all gonna have to forgive me because I am extremely passionate. Is that okay with y'all? Yeah. So okay, I'm now in your company. So you gotta deal with me. <laughs> okay? That's how it is. And me and this man, and our partners, we're going to take this week after week after week after week. And I don't know how we say it in uh, what language we're going to be speaking next month. Next week, uh, it's going to be German. German. We're going to be saying it in German. Somebody teach me how to say it in German. We're going to be like, I'm going to be 
We're going to do it. Watch. It's going to be on video. Over there in Austria, man. They're going to be singing in Germany. And in Asia, we're going to be over there in China. They're going to be like, ting. I'm going to I'm going to ting. I'm ting. I'm telling you. And in Africa, they're going to be like, boom, 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 boom. And Latinos are going to be like, boom, 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 boom. I want that in every single language. Y'all okay with that? Yes. All right. I appreciate y'all taking time with us tonight. Get together whoever brought you down. Go build yourself a reign dynasty. Thank you, Byron.